Odyssey, if you didn't already know, is one of the most lyrical hip-hop artists around from Brooklyn and is also one third of the rap trio Diamond District. He was influenced by early East Coast MCs such as Eric B and Rakim, De La Soul and A Tribe Called Quest. He gravitated more towards them as they didn't talk about drugs or murder and he could relate more to their lyrics. Let me walk you through one of Odyssey's best tracks, like really. Why you wanna catch my eye when you already know that I'm taken? The opening line takes liberty in questioning unfaithfulness. Now, unfaithfulness may not be the only issue between couples in the Western world or the world in general, but the lack of respect and understanding it represents may be part of the reason 50% of marriages end in divorce in America. How you passed due on payments and yet I'm seeing you on vacation. Is this leading to the fact that American debt is around 80% of its GDP? The endless spending habit that people have driven by commercialization? The last line is a jab at Donald Trump's phrase, make America great again, in the lead up to the 2016 election. There is a belief that greatness comes from within, from a change in attitude and not an agenda like he promoted. How do you police the streets of a neighborhood you do not engage in is all too powerful. You should watch the documentary on Corey Pegues, who was the first black precinct officer in the NYPD, someone who was formerly in the streets and now helping police somewhere he understood. He knew what the people were going through and he did well because he could empathize with the community that he was helping. These lines talk about how Brock Allen Turner only got three months of confinement in jail for three separate assault charges, basically going free while someone of colour would likely receive much harsher sentencing for much less time. Gods of Egypt was a 2016 film which starred mostly Caucasian roles in the leads and as a result the film was heavily attacked for being whitewashed, an inaccurate representation of foreign culture in an attempt to make money. If entertainment itself is distorting history, what liberties will it grant itself in the future for new representations of current and past culture? Both director Alex Proyas and Lionsgate issued apologies for this. His second line here is just a restatement of what's already known. Racial discrimination leading to less access to good schools, less access to high paying jobs, family instability and as a result, lack of role models. And so a lack of motivation to work hard. Notice a trend? This is all a cycle, one leads to another. Tell me if I got it all wrong like I signed on the line but didn't read the form is a message questioning whether being born into his race or whether being in the land of the free aka America is really true. It's also possibly a reference to the Bill of Rights being drafted. The fine print is all about the times we mourn meaning that what is written often tends to have its own repercussions later down the line which no one thinks about. For example in terms of the second amendment yes everyone having guns helps individuals be at peace in terms of safety against intruders but it also gives people a ridiculous amount of power relative to if they only had their two fists so even if you're brought into something how can you expect that you'll be treated fairly where was their consent is what that second line is maybe talking about as of right now we could never be pals again a reference to the current state of american affairs for people of color like really was released in 2017 still a year of ridiculous events including the beating of an african-american man by police in euclid ohio three years later you have george floyd and the line about force and measure still rings true the idea that any sign of resistance is seen as hostile is something that needs to be torn down and rechecked for the police donald trump's immigration laws are another example of this issue being highlighted why am i forced to let it go and clean your messes though is addressing how people of color often have to let these things slide and then still have to work twice as hard to be on the same level cleaning your messes also could refer to how this stigma is attached to people of color caucasian people never really have to deal with such things with tariffs gone and investment in mexico seemingly more secure industry in the u.s moved south of the border mexico's dramatically lower labor costs were a magnet for movement of plants with wages around a dollar an hour the u.s's big three japanese and american companies moved production to mexico in terms of the car market with suppliers swarming in mass alongside Low wages in Mexico are ingrained in a labor structure where workers have no rights. Industrial wages in Mexico in real dollar terms have gone down in the 25 years of NAFTA, even as productivity has gone up 80%. A new $1 billion BMW plant recently opened, showing that this trend continuing. Wages will range from $1.10 to $2.50 an hour, according to a review from Bloomberg. Sadly, out of breath, in this first line has a startling resemblance to George Floyd's death but at the same time 
it explains how people of color and ethnic minorities have to work extremely hard to close these persistent labor market gaps. African American families need more wealth to begin with. Wealth makes it easier for families to invest in their own futures. For example, as already mentioned, wealth can be used to support both children and parents' education to start a business, to buy a house in a neighborhood with access to good jobs, and to move to new places with better opportunities. Each of these benefits gives families access to more and better jobs. I was sleeping on floors, making bread instead of bed on tour, is a line about his early shows, where in this DJ Booth interview, for example, he said, I stayed in Europe for six weeks telling every promoter, all you have to do is book me for the cost of a one-way ticket and I'll sleep on your floor. I don't even need a hotel. They only booked me on hip-hop nights when they knew it would be a packed house. I actually made my money back for the Europass within the first couple of shows. I travelled all through Europe on the Europass. I slept on floors of promoters' houses. I did parties where nobody knew who I was, rocked it, and they ended up knowing who I was. Fast forward to today, I have a booking agent. I turned over all my contracts to him, and every promoter who booked me that first year still books me to this day. This line talks about how he's always maintained relatability to those who have undergone loss. Grieving is not an easy topic to broach to someone, as most of the time it's unexpected, but it's also not the easiest to help someone out if you haven't been there. Regarding his second line here, he said in a DJ Booth interview, I'm adamant, adamant and persistent about the things that I like within my own realm. There isn't something outside of it that I'm striving for. There's more than enough to deal with in the bubble I exist in before I start dreaming and aspiring towards bigger things that people want from me. I've barely scraped the surface of what's possible in my own constraints right now. I try to stress that in my music. He also said in that DJ Booth interview, like today alone, I just got two messages for two separate licensing opportunities, one from ESPN and one from a Premier League in Ireland. That sounds super random. I license a song to them and nobody will ever hear it, but the money I make from that is someone's salary. Everyone thinks I'm underrated, but I just made someone's salary from one song. People think I need to be on the radio. People think I need to win a Grammy. The second line here talks about how people in his circle are not looking to leech off his success. He's trying to be or is surrounded by people with the same mentality who want to strive to push him, but also try to be better than him at the same time. It's a situation where there's mutual respect, something Odyssey has stated numerous times that he values. We're just picking between the evils of the lethals and the liars, people tired and they really need a voice, is a look at how he's trying to shine a light on issues that reflect what interests him and what he believes needs to change. People tired, they really need a voice, looks at how people are done with the evils of the past and the current climate being overplayed and nothing being done about it. And that's where his change is going to come in. This that calm collected flow, a line to represent Odyssey's very own flow, spitting truth but also not raising his emotions, almost like a speech. Again for this third line, I'm going to reference a statement from him on the DJ Booth interview. I'm always looking inward, I'm very introspective, I think that's an ongoing theme in a lot of my music. There's definitely a void that I think needs to be filled. In music, there's a lot of artists dedicated to selling a fantasy. I love fantasy too. I love songs about things I'll never be able to obtain. I love songs about partying all night even though I'm normally asleep by 11. It's fantasy, but we also need music that's rooted deeply in reality and I feel like that's my calling, to write about that kind of music. That's what comes naturally to me and I think that's what's missing in music. What I do is quintessentially reality rap.